couldn't be more excited to be here with Trevor to introduce him to the Dodger fans. You know, from our standpoint, uh, to add a player of his caliber to the existing roster that we have uh, was something that, you know, when the offseason started uh, was very much on our mind, but we weren't quite sure how realistic it would be. Um, and so to be sitting here today with the culmination of a lot of work from a lot of people uh, to be in this position is extremely exciting. Um, you know, I'm sure that there are going to be a lot of questions that we will get to, um, but just want to uh, point out that to access and, and bring a player of Trevor's caliber to this organization you know, on such a short-term basis was something that is rare uh, in baseball without trading a lot of minor league prospects. So to be able to keep the talent that we had and add Trevor to it is something that has us really excited. Um, and so with that, I would like to introduce the newest Dodger, uh, fit him with a jersey and a hat, Trevor Bauer. Thank you. Your turn. All right. Well, uh, it's been a, a long time coming. I've been excited for this moment for uh, for a good while now. I used to I used to sit in the bleachers right over there as a kid with uh, Vince Scully on the radio and uh, in my headphones and with my dad watching uh, BP and Dodger games and stuff like that. So, been a long time Dodger fan. Couldn't be more excited to be here and with uh, with the group that we have and excited to get on the field here shortly and get going. Um, process took a while, but couldn't be happier with how it turned out and uh, excited to, to get going. So that's what I got. Okay, well, we'll go to Q&A now, guys. Uh, if you have a question for Trevor, Andrew, or Doc, um, please use the raise hand, raise your hand icon, and Juan will call on you. Thanks. was outside of the dollars was it the way the Dodgers do things that or coming home to pitch what would you say was at the forefront of this decision for you yeah honestly the uh, locale didn't really have much to uh, didn't play much of a factor it was all about the organization the the talent level that's here uh, the organizational structure the systems that are in place the people that are here um, and just yeah you know, I've talked to a lot of people that have played here uh, a, lot, a lot of people that have played for Doc and a lot of people that have played for Andrew and just in general, I've uh, been associated with the Dodger organization, and I haven't, I haven't heard a single negative thing. Everyone has glowing reviews. Um, a lot of people have told me, you know, if you can, if you can play for the Dodgers, you should. Uh, it's first class, um, best that I've ever experienced. So I'm just excited to be here for those reasons. Um, excited to be part of the group. Obviously, you know, the talent on the field speaks for itself. Uh, it's an extremely talented group, an extremely good group of guys uh, by all accounts. And I'm just, I'm excited to, to meet everybody and, and kind of be in, be in the fold and uh, try, to, try to win another World Series. What was this process like for you, uh, the whole free agent process, and were you ever in doubt of not being here? The free agent process was odd for me. It's the first time going through it. I didn't really know what to expect. You know, I, you kind of go into it with an idea that at some point in – in the process, you'll have like offers on the table where you sit down and you say, "Okay, I don't know. Well, let me let me look at the offers and whatever." Um, it played out a lot longer than I, I guess, kind of thought, um, and I really didn't know how it was going to turn out. But uh, I did know that I wanted to be on a team that had a chance to win a World Series. I wanted to be on a team that uh, viewed the, uh, 
you know, me being there as a partnership, um, you know, is willing to work with me on things. I'm willing to work with them on things, and we can come together and do something great. So, uh, everything that I was looking for in, in a home um, is is here. So it's a uh, just very very exciting moment for me. Something that I'm very happy with uh, how it turned out. Next question from Jim Hill. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, congratulations, sir, and welcome to Los Angeles. Thank you. It's great to be here. How surprised are you, and how much did you know about the Dodgers before this deal went down? I knew quite a bit, actually. Um, I, I've been friends with the Van Skoyak family for a while, uh, so I've talked to Rob a good amount. I've talked to Alex Wood a good amount. I've talked to uh, Justin Turner and uh, Walker Bueller, and I know quite a few people here. Rob Hill is one of my good friends. He's in the organization. So I, I've known a lot about kind of what the Dodgers do from – kind of the outside looking in. I, I watch how they perform on the field. I, I understand some of the uh, the cultural things that they have going on. Um, that's kind of where I was coming into the off season. And so as the process went along and uh, just talking with the different people of the organization, the different uh, players and stuff like that, it just, it, it was the right, it was the right fit. And it became very clear at the end that, um, you know, I, I wanted to be here and um, I'm happy that uh, these gentlemen next to me wanted, wanted me here as well. So. Um, yeah, that's the, that's kind of, it, it's just the, it made so much sense at the end. It, it, everything kind of fit, fit together perfectly. Because the Dodgers won the, the whole thing last year and adding you, is that pressure on you to help them repeat? I think there's always pressure, um, on, uh, there's pressure on everybody and every, and every team, especially the World Series champs to come out and, and do it again. Um, I don't know if it adds any extra pressure to me specifically or not. My focus is always, uh, you know, the, the, it's always the same. I want to be the best pitcher I can possibly be. I want to win the most games I possibly can for my team. I want to be uh, a positive member of the clubhouse and a positive member of the team and accomplish something great. Um, so I focus on, you know, training. I focus on the work that I can put in and, and being the best that I can be at my job and uh, trying to assist others and how they can be better and uh, be the best at their job. So. I really don't look at pressure from a standpoint of results. Um, I look at the process, uh, and I know I can control the process and how I work and how I go about it. And um, at the end of the day, the results are just a result of, of the process in my view. So uh, I don't feel a ton of pressure on that front. Well, have fun and good luck. Thank you very much. Next question from Juan Castillo. Go ahead, Jorge. Hey, what's up, guys? Um, just wanted to, from either one of you, from Andrew or, or Trevor, uh, if you guys can kind of take us through the timeline of like how this all went down, because there was some confusion there on, on the internet quite a bit about where Trevor was going, um, you know, there down to the last day. Just who, who, initi who initiated the contact um, and it's sort of the timeline from there, um, um, how this happened? I think you can take that one, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I mentioned, um, Coming into the off season, uh, Trevor was very front and center for us, and so we had a few different phone calls and, you know, stayed uh, in contact. And, you know, as we got into, you know, a couple weeks ago, things started to pick up, and there were days where I felt optimistic and certain days where I didn't. Um, but I think that's the nature of most, if not all, negotiations. Um, you know, from our standpoint. We went to, I went to bed Thursday night uh, really bummed and thinking that it wasn't going to work out. And waking up Friday and continuing the process and having conversations, um, our ownership group, Mark Walter, uh, you know, put some wind behind the sale and said, let's go get this done. And so uh, fortunately, it wasn't too late, and we were able to uh, come to this outcome. Couldn't be more excited about it, uh, but there were definitely times along the way where – I wasn't as optimistic. So to be sitting here, uh, obviously, uh, in this case, I'll take the result. As will I. Andrew, Andrew for you, um, yeah, th there are some Dodger fans out there, and I've heard from a few through Twitter and email that are disappointed that you signed, uh, Trevor, uh, for reasons that have nothing to do with baseball or money, uh, but because of the behavior on social media, the views you've represented. Um, are you worried about the message you sent to fans? And what do you say to those fans who might feel alienated and feel like maybe you don't value them? That I'm sorry, I don't value what? M value them. Oh, 
we very much value them. Uh, that part is easy. Yeah, I, I think, you know, hopefully over the last six plus years, um, some trust and credibility has been built up in terms of the research that we do on players and the vetting process that we go through uh, in terms of talking to teammates of players that we're looking at, talking to clubhouse guys, talking to trainers. You know, we get as much information as we can um, on players. And, you know, there is some stuff that's more public uh, with Trevor that definitely was something that we wanted to dig into. Uh, you know, had multiple conversations with Trevor. Stan and I talked to Trevor. Um, and the most important thing is every teammate we talked to, all the feedback we got from uh, every organization he was with was not only incredibly positive in terms of the type of teammate he is, um, but also in terms of the impact that he makes on each organization. And so, you know, that to me, I think the talent is pretty obvious. Um, but I actually think that, like, from a cultural standpoint, um, from a continuing to strive to get better at everything we do, um, I actually think he is going to be a tremendous asset in that. And so it's not for me to speak for Trevor, uh, but in our conversations, he's alluded to past mistakes he's made. And you know what? We're all going to make mistakes. And what's important for me is how people, including myself, when I make mistakes, it's how we internalize it and how we, um, you know, what our thoughts are about it going forward. And so. You know, from our standpoint, it was important to have that conversation, and we came away from it feeling good about it. Now, obviously, time will tell, but I feel like he is going to be a tremendous ad, not just on the field, but in the clubhouse, in the community, and that's obviously why we're sitting here. Next question from Bill Plunkett. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll hold my question for a second, Trevor, if you if you want to address that topic at all. Yeah, I think Andrew said it best. Everyone makes mistakes in the past. Um, I try to learn from them. I try to learn as quickly as I possibly can. I try to understand other people's viewpoints on things and be better in the future. Um, I think if you look at uh, that, my history as, as a baseball player, my history on social media, my history as a person, for those who know me well, um, they'll see that I apply that process to everything that I do. I'm committed to doing that moving forward as well. And ultimately, I'm here to be a positive impact on anyone that I can be, um, both in the community, in the clubhouse, on the field, at the stadium, whatever the case is. So I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to win with this with this group. I'm excited to interact with the Dodger fans and uh, in the community of LA. I grew up here. I've been a long time. Uh, you know, I've, I spent 20 years here before I uh, you know, signed professionally. I've my parents are still here. I'm a member of the community. I still consider myself a member of the community, and I look forward to having a positive impact on the community. Yeah, most uh, free agents in your situation this winter would have been looking for, uh, I guess they would call it security, and the longest contract they could possibly get. You obviously took a different approach. Why was the shorter deal with Op Out uh, so attractive to you? I want to be uh, a member of a winning team. Uh, I want to be a member of an organization that values me and that I value them. Like I said, I'll, I'll, I've said it a lot this, this entire process. I'm looking for a partnership. Um, I want a chance to win. And I don't want to be a player that uh, signs a long-term deal and towards the end is resented either uh, by the fan base, by the organization, or you know, on my end for having my performance slip below what uh, my contract dictates. So. I wanted something with uh, with flexibility. I wanted something that worked for me and for the organization. Um, and as far as security goes, I'm well aware of the fact that I'm <laughs> very well compensated and I'm plenty secure in, in you know, my life, my family's life, uh, my fu my kids' life every in, down in the, in the future. So um, it, it wasn't about the money for me. It's about being a part of something uh, that's bigger than myself, uh, being a part of a, an organization that can win. I want to win a World Series. I've come in second, uh, both in college and in, uh, in the big leagues. I'm tired of it, so I want to come in first. And for, for Andrew, uh, why was such a bold move the move to make when you have uh, you know, a World Series roster coming back and a starting rotation that was basically the best in the National League already? 
Um, well, I mean, I think heading into 2021, there are a lot of unknowns um, and, you know, kind of front and center for us on that is our pitching depth. And, you know, we feel really good. Now we feel like we've got seven proven major league starters that we're not sure exactly how things are going to shake out on April 1st, but couldn't feel more confident that they're going to help us throughout the year uh, and also through October. And so, um, you know, adding to our pitching depth was something that uh, was really important to us just with all the unknowns going from a 60 game season, you know, back to 162 game. Um, and as talented as Trevor is, um, you know, the durability is just as impressive. The fact that he's been able to take the ball every fifth day, much to his chagrin, not every fourth day. Um, but it's not to be, you know, understated in this. Um, you know, I think people focus on the talent as they should, but his ability to take the ball every turn um, is really impactful. And so for us, as we are looking to navigate the unknown and all that comes with that, you know, adding to our pitching depth was something um, that was important to us. That being said, because of the talent we had, it was a really high bar to crack uh, t to get in there. And, you know, so there were very few players that kind of fit into that, um, which is why Trevor was kind of on our radar throughout the winter. Um, and, you know, I think over the last few years, uh, people have gotten more of a sense. I mean, we run our payroll looking at it over three, four, five years, not in any one moment in time. And so past moves have created some flexibility, you know, things that will happen in the future. Um, and for us, it's about, you know, doing everything we can to go out and defend uh, our title. And hopefully this time we can do it with fans in the stands here at Dodger Stadium. Did the, uh, the moves the Padres made this uh, winter motivate you at all in the moves that you made? It's hard to say. I mean, obviously, we've noticed. Uh, we think they're a really talented team. Um, that being said, we're pretty intrinsically motivated to be as good as we can be. Um, but yeah, we've definitely noticed. Um, you know, last year was a good little battle between us, and we anticipate that that's going to be the case going forward. Um, you know, just digging through some Trevor Bauer YouTube videos uh, with my son, we came across one about him and Manny Machado. So we're going to have to spend some time in spring training talking through that. Um, but no, we feel like uh, they're a really good team and we're looking forward to, you know, the, the series coming up this year. And we've definitely noticed what they've done and, you know, we're going to do everything we can to maintain our position. Next question from John Hernandez. Go ahead. Uh, Trevor, uh, going back to this uh, social media stuff, you know, um, two of the more kind of high profile incidents, uh, you know, that caused controversy involved women who felt, you know, they were being harassed. And, you know, and I've read, obviously, your explanations or defenses of this thing. You know, I know in one case you just said you're, hey, I was defending myself. Uh, you know, in the second case involving the uh, uh, reporter from the New York Daily News, you said, right, um, you know, I can't really be responsible for the kind of the actions of my followers and what they might do. And just kind of wondering, when you talk about, you know, how you're, you've learned from your mistakes, I was just wondering, if in those two particular instances, if you could talk about, I guess, what you learned and, uh, you know, how you may have, might have been wrong in those instances. Look, I'm not going to go into specifics on everything, all the conversations that I've had with people across all walks of life over the past couple of years and all the things that I've learned. I can say that uh, I have learned from those. I, I've done a lot of um, – I spent a lot of my time – going and talking to people to try to understand other perspectives. And um, I'm, I'm doing my best to be better, um, as I do in all walks of my life. So um, I don't think that uh, it makes any sense to dive into, into specific issues uh, in this forum. But um, I am committed to being a good, uh, being better on social media, being better on, on the field, being better in the clubhouse, being better in, in life in general. Uh, and as I stated earlier, I'm excited to be part of the community. I'm excited to work with the community. I'm excited to be part of an organization that's you know here to win um, and here to make a positive impact in people's lives. Next question from Eric Steven. Go ahead. Uh, Trevor, you've talked in your videos about you know wanting to have a conversation about pitching every fourth day. Andrew alluded to it. Had you had that conversation? Was that part of your process in talking to the Dodgers? And how did that go? 
No, we haven't had that, that conversation yet. We did have a conversation about it, um, and my, my point was uh, that you know, I just want someone to be open to hearing what, uh, what I have to say. So that's, that's really the extent of, uh, to which we've talked about it. I imagine in spring training or at some point in the future, we'll have more in-depth conversation about it, which I look forward to. Um, but again, it's not a, it's not a selfish, um, me, me, me wanting to pitch every fourth day is not a selfish thing. Um, I have a lot of reasons behind why I feel like I would be a better pitcher doing that, which would help the team and how it may help other players uh, in the organization and on the team uh, as well. Now, I don't make those decisions, obviously, but I've spent a lot of time over the past three years thinking about it and thinking through all the different uh, ramifications of it. So that's really, uh, again, going back to the partnership uh, thing that I keep mentioning, just having someone that's willing to, to listen to that and just have an honest conversation, whether the result is what I want or not, um, just the, the, the open-mindedness to having that conversation is important to me. Next question is from Rayshon Haylock. Go ahead. Go ahead, Rayshon. Oh, sorry about that. Can you hear me? Hey, Trevor. Welcome to LA. Thanks. Good um, to be here. You, you mentioned, you know, being in the bleachers and, you know, watching games, listening to Ben. Uh, how much did you imagine yourself in a Dodger jersey, you know, during that time growing up? And, and what's that realization kind of feeling like now? Yeah, um, it, it was hard to imagine myself in a Dodger jersey because sitting in the stands, you look out there, and the the players on the field they're they're superstars. You know, they're you know, like as a as a kid, you looked out there and you're like, ah, if I could ever be even close to that, that'd be awesome. I wonder what the lifestyle's like. I wonder what you know what what being on the field is like in front of fifty thousand fans. I wonder what all that's like. And they almost take on as a kid, they take on almost like an alien or a foreign. Uh, kind of being because it's, it's not a reality in my life at that point um, and now being here it's just uh, it's a really surreal thing looking you know sitting on the field and looking out at the stands as opposed to sitting in the stands looking out on the field um, and really one of the things that I'm uh, most passionate about is is trying to provide that same type of inspiration that same type of uh, I guess kind of wide-eyed wonder that uh, for the kids that are watching me play so that it inspires them to uh, go out and play baseball and to, to love the game that's given me so much, um, both in my, in my uh, personal life, professional life, family life, you know, all, all around. Um, I, I really want to inspire kids to, to get involved with baseball and to come out to the game and to, to try to be big leaguers and, um, and chase their dreams. So it's, it's a surreal moment for me uh, and something that I, I'm very proud of, uh, being able to sit here on this field and um, – you know, in the same place that I would come two times a year and, and watch uh, all the all the Dodger games. So it's uh it's pretty it's pretty surreal for me right now. Next question is from JP Hornstra. Go ahead, JP. Hey Trevor, you've spoken in the past about the importance of the analytical resource that a team makes available to you being a separator in today's game. What specifically about the Dodgers and how they use analytics to help the pitchers really impressed you during this process? Well, without going into any specifics, uh, which I think is best kept in house. We're going to cut your mic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, the, the way that everything's integrated, um, the systems that are in place is, is really impressive. The technology is what it is, but if you can't interpret the information, if you can't interpret the analytics in a way that's usable for players, um, it, it doesn't really do a whole lot of good. So. In all the conversations that we had, um, just the way that the, the medical staff is integrated with the on-field staff is integrated with the, the training staff, and the you know just all the way all the way through the organization, um, the the simple ways that complex information can be communicated uh, is really impressive. And I certainly don't know. Um, I'm sure I just know the very tip of the iceberg, I guess, on what's actually available, given that I've only been a member of the organization officially now for I don't even know 30 uh, minutes, 30 minutes, something like that. So. Uh, a lot more to dive into for sure, which I'm excited about, but uh, just can't really speak enough to the how well everything's integrated and the, the people that are here um, uh, communicating that information. Thank you. Next question is from Alden Gonzalez. Go ahead. Hey, Trevor, I'm wondering if you could take me through that Friday morning that I think you alluded to on social media. You said there was about like a five-hour period of indecisiveness. Where was your head at? Who did you speak with? Um, how did that process play out? And what ultimately nudged you to 
taking the dog? Yeah, it was. Uh, I woke up at 6 a.m. Um, to phone calls from uh, my agent Rachel uh, and John. Hey, this thing changed. What do you think about this? This thing changed. This person said this. What do you think about that? Hey, get your financial guy on on the line. What's the what are the tax ramifications? Hey, get the. You know, let's talk to your dad about this. I was with my mom. My dad was. Uh, I, I was in Northern California at the time, and. My mom was with me, and my dad was down here in Southern California. So it's like, okay, let me call dad. And so I'm on the phone with dad. I'm like, oh, I'm getting a call from uh, from John. Let me hop off, dad. I'll call you right back. Okay, well, John's gonna merge in Rachel. Okay, so it was a it was a very crazy time. Um, things were happening very quickly, and um, I honestly don't remember a whole lot of it. Uh, I think I got some of it on my vlog camera, so I'll probably have to go back and rewatch that because it was just such a whirlwind. But uh, obviously, very happy with uh, how everything played out. Do you remember though what it was that just decided it for you? Yeah, ultimately? Oh, yeah. Ultimately, it's just the, it's the people, it's the organization, it's the culture, uh, the chance to win, um, and just uh, kind of everything I've mentioned so far. Uh, the way that the uh, the organization went about the the whole process, uh, I felt was very respectful of me and my wishes. Hopefully, they felt the same on on our end. Um, and just the the partnership idea, trying to work together, finding solutions that work for both sides. Um, uh, even in the negotiation process, so um, the chance to win, the the uh, the culture, the people, the the way everything's integrated, the systems that are built, the the way that the organization handled everything, all of that played a factor. Thanks. Next question is for Jack Harris. Go ahead, Jack. Uh, this is for Andrew. Um, does does signing Trevor reduce or affect the chances of maybe re-signing uh, Justin Turner, or you know, change how you might approach the rest of the offseason when it comes to uh, addressing any other areas of the roster? Um, the simple answer is no. I mean, I think uh, we're committed to doing everything we can to put together the best roster that we can. Obviously, it's difficult for me to comment on a specific free agent. Um, but I think it's pretty well documented, you know, what we think of JT, what he's meant to this organization. Um, but as far as how that's going to play out, uh, we will see. But, um, you know, at every turn in the six plus years I've been here, you know, ownership has been incredibly supportive of doing everything we can to win and to reward uh, the amazing fans that we have to bring a world championship back to L.A., which had been, you know, a long time coming. Uh, and now their mind says, let's do it again. And, you know, let's flip the switch and have the mindset of repeating. And obviously the action of, of this uh, speaks to that. Um, but, you know, I think it's difficult at any one moment in time to look at our payroll and to deduce too much from it in that, you know, we've talked about this a lot. It is a three to five year kind of process that we look at um, the ebbs and flows of that. But the thing that has been constant throughout is winning. And so that's where our mindset still is. And you know, we'll see how that plays out. Next question from Beth Harris. Go ahead, Beth. Hey, Trevor, um, what happened uh, with Dodger fans at your hotel and house since last Friday that you felt the need to draw a boundary with them through a message on social media? Uh, I was walking through the hotel lobby, getting on the uh, getting on the elevator to go up to my room and um, had someone, an excited fan, follow me and uh, even you know up to the elevator asking me to sign. And I, I told them, you know, I, I'm in my private you know, my place of residence, I, I'm not going to sign at the hotel. Uh, if you see me outside of the hotel in public, feel free to come up and ask, and I'm, I'd be happy to sign. But you know, at the hotel, it's uh, it's my place of residence, and I'm, I'm not going to sign. Um, the, the individual continued to, to ask and press and follow me. So I said, hey, can you please have some respect for my personal space? I, I'm trying to be respectful of you and, and everything, um, but please have some respect for me at my, at my hotel. He continued to follow me um, up until the point where as I was getting on the elevator, he was right outside the elevator, um, you know, continuing to ask me and press me for, for a signature. And I want to reiterate that I, I, I really enjoy interacting with the fans. I, I love signing for fans. I do so at the stadium when fans are allowed in basically every game. I do so outside of the stadium. I love seeing fans in public. 
I do just think there needs to be a little bit of respect for personal space when someone's at their place of residence, um, just as human beings. You know, if someone says, "Hey, not right now," um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm eating or I'm you know at, at my house or whatever the case is, uh, just to have a little bit of respect and understand that you know, we are people too. Um, I do my best to sign for everybody and interact with the fans in every way possible. I have a lot of really fun ideas that I can't wait to do uh, this season to interact with the community and interact with Dodger fans. And um, I promise that <laughs> I'll be signing plenty. Uh, but I think there needs to be a little bit of a little bit of personal respect um, for personal space, and especially at someone's place of residence. Just to follow up, um, there were um, a lot of Mets fans that uh, last Friday thought you were going to New York. Was it just was it a matter of someone on your team pushed the wrong button that led them to think that? Yeah, I put out a, a statement on social media, so I guess I'll just refer you to uh, to that. I tried to explain everything as, as well as possible. Um, I tried to spend a little bit of time getting to know exactly what happened and talking to different people. Um, certainly was a mistake. I was not trying to, um, I was not trying to lead any fan base on or give anybody false hope. Uh, something went out, you know, before I had made any decisions. So um, I, I guess I would refer you to my to my social media post for for more on that. I got time for one more. Go ahead, Beto. Hey, Trevor. Belaboring the uh, internet point, you've said in the past that your online actions probably aren't smart, aren't ideal. You've also said if someone comes at you, you will fight back. When you say you have worked and are working on being better, do you mean you plan to stop fighting back, as you put it? Look, I've, I, I've made mistakes in the past, as I've said. Um, I've also referenced talking to a lot of different people and trying to understand different perspectives on it. Uh, I continue to do I continue to do that, and I don't think that this is the forum to go into specifics on on how that will happen. I think it's a very nuanced issue that, um, you know, I all I can say is that I'm committed to to being a member of uh, a positive member of the community, impacting people's lives in a positive way, um, and and winning with this organization. I think that's what today's you know about on my end is uh, trying to be involved in all the all the different ways that I can be in a positive manner, both on the field, in the community, and in the clubhouse. Thank you, Aaron. That concludes the press conference. Just eye candy. Just eye candy. I'll take this all year long. Great. Who the other one is? Little mouse or the other one? I wanted to bring it up. I wanted to figure out. Just get a one shot with the talk.